Ryan Reynolds keeps making mediocre Netflix films. Yes, he does. Um, <laughs> this one had promise, but then it just kind of doesn't. So it's directed by Sean Levy. And I think that's a lot of the problem right there. He <laughs> directs very slick and very hacky movies. And that's what this kind of is. Laura, this is me. Hi. Parallel contact, babe. Well, you know, you've always said that you've wished you'd met me earlier. Here I am. <laughs> So Ryan Reynolds plays a uh, an Air Force super pilot from the year 2050 who uh, uses the time travel technology of the moment to travel back to 2022 to try and undo things that have happened in the terrible future. And in doing so, has to team up with his 12-year-old self, played by a young actor named Walker Scobell. And um, they have to figure out how to uh, uh, patch up all the mess that uh, time has made. Uh, the casting in this movie is part of why this is so incredibly uninspired it's like <laughs> why is cracking hero oh we'll get ryan reynolds uh kind-hearted long-suffering mom oh jennifer garner um you know uh, a sexy super soldier uh, who is also the romantic interest zoe saldana like <laughs> these are all talented people and i'm not knocking them for being in this movie but the idea of casting them in these roles is so basic it's just like it's so lying they're like you didn't try at all like Catherine Keener as the villain is the one sort of flourish that this movie has of like not doing the super obvious thing um weirdly kind of like turning red which is the much better option for this weekend and also streaming this is a movie about parents and children and about people coming to understand uh, uh you know how they treat their you know treat how you treat your mom from the eye from the point of view of an annoying teenager versus the point of view of how you treat your mom as an adult who has regrets about when you were an annoying teenager um <laughs> it's handled much better in turning red i'll say that but there is a lovely scene between mm -hmm. reynolds and jennifer garner mm -hmm. that i loved and like mm -hmm. it, that like watch that scene yeah. that's really the only thing in this movie that's any good the rest of it is all pew 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 and like <laughs> techno babble and 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 cg spaceships and you know it, it yeah this is dumb yeah that scene in the bar between jennifer garner and ryan reynolds like they each hit just the right amount of like emotional restraint and like it's tantalizing what they yeah. want to say to each other like it's warm and it's sweet and it's satisfying and it's a, such a an anomaly <laughs> in a movie that's otherwise so loud and so obvious um i did enjoy the interplay between ryan reynolds and walker scobell because they're you know they're the same person sure so they have the same kind of banter it's like a mismatched buddy comedy but they're the same guy <laughs> I'll tell you though, um, as a former 12 year old with a mouth, I did not buy this 12 year old with a mouth. No? Like it was a little, okay. it was a little much at times, but it, that's the writing. It's not the kid's fault. He's fine. And yes, they, they are fun together. Yeah. He's well cast. I mean, I think in the eyes, he looks like Ryan Reynolds and he's got that same kind of like smart ass deadpan delivery that, you know, disaffected, disillusioned. Mm -hmm. um, and so some of that is fun. Um, but then so much of it is like cgi like empty glossy cgi like the the armies of people who come for ryan reynolds and zoe saldana are like literally faceless like robot droid things on are they on motorcycles i don't know uh, kind of yeah yeah thing. but they're i mean they're people in these suits but the suits cover their faces so they might as well be just like yeah. ones and zero robots it's you know so bland and then what katherine keener has to do first she's forced to endure this really uncomfortable uncanny valley situation where she mm. where she talks to her younger self and it's like why do we need this scene um I, I wish that she were giving something more interesting to do beyond the really archaic notion of like i'm bitter because i never got married and had kids yeah yeah that's unfortunate that seems a little uh a little retrograde and then oh, but... mark ruffalo as the dad doesn't get to do a whole lot. Not you know? really. It's no. like a great waste of, of him. So all of this just feels like product, right? Slick yeah. and like Frankenstein product and pieces of other movies. It's got so much Spielberg influence here. Mm. There's a shot in the woods where the kid comes out with the flashlight and the dog that's like straight out of ET. Uh huh. Um, and, and yeah, the, the stuff with ashes like ashes from the trees. And yeah. there's stuff with like the the spaceships and the trees and the woods. And you know, it's got pieces of Back to the Future in it. It's 
Oh, yeah. Like, and they even, and it's one of those things where it's like, well, if we cite it, it's okay. It's like on La Brea where they talk about Lost. No, that doesn't make it okay that you're ripping off Lost. <laughs> Sorry. Um, it's shot by Tobias Schleiser, who did like Dream Girls and, uh, come, you know, the recent um, Come From Away on Broadway. Uh, you know, he's oh, like a, a like a legit, yeah. he's a really terrific cinematographer, but he is, uh, you know, he's a wrinkle in time, but he's kind of asked to do the obvious because that's all anybody's asked to do in this movie. Uh, you know, I, I, it's like, I think with Netflix, we're going to get like, you know, your, your year of the dogs and your lost daughters and you're like, you know, hey, take us seriously and give us awards movies. And then there's going to be, this is what they used to, what, what studios back when like people went to the movies every day or like several times a week would call programmers. It was just, it was just like this sort of boxy product. It, it fills the, the, the calendar. It does what it says on the box, but yeah. it's not interesting or, you know, daring or, or, or provocative in any way. It's just, it's a it, this is this is a movie for 12 year old boys to fold laundry to. <laughs> if only can you teach my kid to fold laundry? I would love that. That is a contradiction in terms, I grant. <laughs> is this better or worse than Red Notice? Better, <laughs> maybe, but like I wouldn't watch either of them again uh, under duress, you know. It is not quite the empty craven cash grab that Red Notice seems to be. Yeah, it's Red Notice. Trying Red, to be Red, emotional. Yeah, Red Notice is phoning it in. This movie is at least texting it in. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, other movie, <laughs> for trying. Um, so I'm saying four. What's your number? Uh, I, I said five and a half. You did. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, that one scene really buoyed me for much of this movie, thinking we were going to get more of that. And then we did not. So We anyway. did not. Yes. The Adam Project's on Netflix if you have laundry to fold.